staying in Japan more now on that unfolding nuclear difficulty at the Fukushima plant just north of Tokyo. Workers are battling to prevent a nuclear meltdown after a second blast rocked the plant. Now, Tokyo Electric says a buildup of hydrogen caused an explosion at its reactor number three today. For more on just what could happen next, what has happened, we're joined by Seth Gray. He's CEO of Lightbridge, which is a nuclear energy consulting firm. His firm actually just visited some plants in Japan. Seth, I want to rely on your expertise here to make sense of exactly what is happening at these reactors right now. Meltdown sounds scary. What does it actually mean? Well, it's difficult to know exactly what is happening right now, given the information flow. But our understanding is that right now the control rods are in place in all of the reactors, that there will not be um, a catastrophic incident at any of these reactors, that what has happened is that the tsunami caused a loss of the fuel supply to the off-site generating pumps, causing the pumps to fail, which circulate the water in the core, causing the core temperature to rise. Some water levels have dropped, exposing the tops of fuel rods, so there's been a little melting on the tops of the fuel rods, but not full rods. And it looks like they are starting to get the worst of this under control. So uh, the bottom line is that this, it sounds like what you're saying is that it's, it's a disaster for Tokyo Electric Power, but not necessarily a disaster for the public at large? Correct. This does not look like it will be a disaster for the public or for the environment. Okay. Uh, obviously, a key point here, the human aspect. I, I want to ask you, though, because there are all these reports uh, in the media right now of even radioactive particles. If not a meltdown, if it's just distribution of particles, the Pentagon says even some 60 miles away, what does that mean for health risks? The levels that have been released uh, so far should not affect the health off the sites of these plants. The radioactive steam that was deliberately released by Tokyo Electric Power to relieve pressure inside the reactors uh, was filtered before released, but did contain some radiation that is being picked up elsewhere. But that was controlled and, and done by Tokyo Electric Power. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's a controlled fashion there, it sounds like. I mean, the bottom line, though, to connect it back here at home and in Europe, is that your industry is now very much on the defensive. Are you just starting to work from the assumption that the brakes are being put on nuclear plant development? Well, I think that governments will need to take a very careful look at where reactors are sited at the safety systems before building new plants. The new plants, which are 40 years newer than the 1971 plants we're dealing with in Japan, have a great deal of new safety systems in them. Uh, we work very carefully on the siting of plants and adding systems to make sure that if they're in a seismic zone, that but they can handle it. Can I just clarify here, because it's my understanding that in the United States there are about 104 nuclear reactors, 23 of them are of that same model that we're talking about at the, at the Daiichi plant, right? There are boiling water reactors in the United States. Uh, but the plants in the United States are not in as seismically active zones. Okay, so those 23, because they're not on a fault zone, you say they're not a worry. Right, and also there's added safety measures that were put in place after 9-11 in the United States that go beyond what is in Japan. Okay, so your company is consulting. You say you're going to try to make nuclear plants safer. How do you right. do that? Uh, two ways. One is on our consulting work, we're working directly for governments, some of whom we're meeting with this week, uh, including on the siting of reactors and including the most modern safety equipments. The industry's done a very good job at coming up with new modern safety standards and methods. Also, we've developed new fuel technology for reactors that has significant safety advantages as well. Uh, well, would those withstand a tsunami? We believe uh, they would have. Basically, I think the plants in the United States built to the current standards would have. What we had in Tokyo were skyscrapers swaying that suffered no material damage. We certainly could have protected facilities at these plants better in, than TEPCO did.
But they weren't built to the level of earthquake that Japan felt. They were just at, a, at level eight, not level nine. So do you just work from the assumption that everything has to get scaled up then to withstand the absolute worst case type of earthquake, then tsunami? That has been our company's assumption. That has been what we've been doing in our, in our consulting work. Yes, our position is that these plants should have been built to a higher standard. All right. Seth, thank you very much for lending your expertise this morning.